So, what is a siphonophore? It looks a lot like a jellyfish, right? But it's actually a lot cooler than that. A siphonophore is what you call a colonial organism, meaning it is a lot of little animals all working together for the survival of the colony. An example of a colonial organism most people should be familiar with is something like coral. Each of these little sections here is an individual animal called a zooid. Zooids are genetically identical clones that all have different jobs to do. These ones are used for movement and propulsion. Down here are ones used for hunting with their long tentacles covered in nematocysts, or stinging cells. Many siphonophores are connected with this central cord here that sometimes has a swim bladder-like organ at its tip for controlling buoyancy. Siphonophore colonies are not known to interact with each other beyond reproduction, which in this case is done primarily through broadcast spawning. Siphonophores are in the phylum Cnidaria. Their exact place in the evolutionary history has been, and still is, somewhat of a subject of debate. In researching, you'll find several answers. Most of them also stipulate that it's not definitive and that more research is still required. So I'll just be giving my take on them. Two of the main branches of the phylum Cnidaria have given rise to jellyfish and coral. A siphonophore is kind of compromised between the two strategies. It is a colonial organism, much like coral, but it also functions much like a jellyfish as a pelagic predator with stinging cells. So you may be asking, what do they eat? Well, the short answer is pretty much anything. Small crustaceans, plankton, fish, and marine snow. One of the most interesting things I learned during this research was how they hunt. They swim in specific patterns to weave a kind of net out of their tentacles. That to me almost feels like some sort of intelligence, which is not something you expect when looking at an animal like this. Siphonophores are also sometimes prey in their ecosystem, their most well-documented predators being sea turtles and ocean sunfish. In recent study, it has been found that siphonophores are part of an extremely important carbon sink system at play in our oceans. Siphonophores live in a part of the ocean called the mesopelagic, or the twilight zone. It is a massive section of our ocean stretching from 200 to 1,000 meters deep. It has been called the twilight zone because little to no light reaches it. The twilight zone is home to something called the deep sea sound scattering layer. This is a band seen on sonar that was sometimes in the past mistaken for a second seafloor. In reality, it is essentially a deep sea ocean concentration of life. It is a massive biomass, possibly the largest on the planet. One of the many organisms that live in this layer are siphonophores. This massive biomass is proving to be an immensely important part of the climate balance of our planet. Each night as the sun goes down, this layer of life, including siphonophores, rises up to feed on phytoplankton and other carbon sequestering animals. This carbon sink that siphonophores are an important part of can sequester up to 6 billion tons of carbon each year. Siphonophores and other organisms in this biomass literally keep our planet's climate stable. Because of this recent discovery, for United Nations Climate Week, they did this. This is a video of a siphonophore projected onto the side of the United Nations building. The intent was to raise awareness of the importance of this carbon sequestering system and promote research into this understudied topic that is already possibly under threat. As fishing near the shores has become more difficult in recent decades, commercial fishing has been looking more and more into international waters. They are looking into starting to exploit the massive biomass in the deep ocean. Siphonophores would be caught as well in this fishing. They are so incredibly fragile that even scientists who are trying to study them without catching them accidentally shred them with their ROVs. Just imagine what a trawling net would do to them. So what can be done to protect siphonophores and this carbon sink? As has been said before, you can't protect something until you understand it. So for now, much more research is required. But to start, I think we need to find a way to regulate international waters. Deep sea fishing and mining are bound to cause all sorts of problems that we don't even know of yet. When I first learned about siphonophores in 2016, most of this climate research had not been done yet. I count it as a privilege to be able to research something like this, 
on the forefront most edge of evolving science. I would never have imagined that this creature is part of the reason our planet is habitable. That's huge. I will never forget that.